Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for Friday, November 10th, 2017. This is episode 40. And we're going to be talking about giving your bots connectivity using Microsoft Flow. So this is part of the presentation that I gave at Integrate 2017 USA. And since those sessions weren't recorded, I felt it would be still a good use of time to actually go ahead and record this to share this with those who were unable to attend Integrate 2017 USA. Also, we're going to have community content this week, and this is going to be related to getting an alert when one of your users creates a flow within the Microsoft Flow service. And in order to do this, we're going to take advantage of Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. Uh, so this was a community content by Daniel, I hope I get your last name correct, Laskowitz, who is an MVP from the Netherlands, actually not too far away from Steph Jan. So let's get into it. And just a reminder that Middleware Friday is community content and the opinions expressed within it are my own. So let's talk a little bit about bots first before we get into the flow side of things. And really what's going on here is bots are becoming the new apps. So obviously there's a famous saying from Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella talking about bots are the new apps. Obviously all of the major technology players have a bot in some sort of form, whether that's be Cortana, Siri, Alexa, or the Google Home device. Those are all examples of bots, which in essence take care of tasks. And really it doesn't matter so much around how those tasks are requested or initiated. Uh, the idea is that you've got a piece of software running in the background that's able to fulfill that task for you. Now things certainly get really interesting around bots when you start to, to take into consideration the cognitive aspects where a bot is able to listen or receive text and actually try to interpret your intent in order to drive some sort of flow um, with no pun intended uh, within the task execution. Now, part of the reason why bots have a lot of adoption is related to the amount of people that are using chat-based applications. So if you look at this diagram here, we'll see that WhatsApp and Facebook have over a billion monthly active users. So that's as of January, 2017. So I'm sure that number is even larger at this point. And I'm sure if you reflect on your day, you've likely used one, if not more, than one of these different services. You probably haven't used BlackBerry Messenger. Um, I'm still shocked that people actually use that, but that's besides the point. But what, something to think about is when you are building applications, why don't you build your applications where the attention already is? So clearly, if we've got over a billion monthly active users using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, they clearly want to be there. If they didn't, they wouldn't be using it. So that's something to think about. Instead of trying to, to draw and pull people away from the place they want to be, why not you actually bring your different services to them in the form of a bot through a chat-based application? So what is a bot? So a bot really on the back end is a web app. And the web app is able to talk to other APIs, and these can be on-premise APIs. This can be third-party APIs. These can be your own APIs inside of Azure or you can also connect to cognitive APIs. Certainly in, the, uh, in regard to Microsoft and its offerings, we've got Azure Cognitive Services, where we can have the ability to do sentiment analysis and computer vision and face, face and emotion detection, all using these cognitive APIs. Next, we obviously need humans who are going to interact with our bot, and they can, they're gonna do so over a variety of different channels. So here's some of the popular channels that are available in the bot framework provided by Microsoft. In addition, we also have Microsoft Teams, which we're gonna to see today. Then we need some sort of a connector that's gonna go ahead and route these different messages. And it's going to also keep track of the conversations in order to ensure that as you're sending messages between yourself and the bot, that they don't get mixed up with other people that may also be conversing with a particular bot. So with a bit of a background um, around bots out of the way, let's talk a little bit about bot creator personas. Now this was partly driven um, based upon this session that I did give where I had Logic Apps and Flow 
and bots as part of a holistic presentation. Now, it was worth calling out some of the different tools that you may use to build bots based upon your persona. So in this case, we're talking about Sandra, who's a pro integrator. So she works in IT, she is a developer, she codes in Visual Studio. She typically builds on custom solutions. She loves being in the Azure portal. She loves building APIs and functions are her go-to for writing serverless applications. So she's gonna go ahead and use tools like the Bot Framework and Azure Logic Apps where she can go ahead and build this cohesive, comprehensive bot solution um, using these pro developer tools. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about the citizen integrator. And in this case, it's Stuart. And Stuart works in HR as a uh, human resources information systems analyst. He's got some technical training. Excel and SharePoint are where he spends a lot of his time. He's like many other people in HR is under constant pressure to do more with less. He doesn't have access to the Azure portal, although he probably would like it. And he administrates SaaS based applications like Workday, SuccessFactors and Taleo. And in this case, Stuart has the ability to build bots for either his team or his end user customers using technologies like Microsoft Flow and the Busy Connector. So the Busy Connector is a third party connector for Microsoft Flow. It's provided by an organization called H3 Solutions. Next up, we've got the ad hoc integrator. And this is where it gets a little bit gray in terms of when to use the right technology set. So in this case, we've got Sam. He is in IT. He's a service desk supervisor. He can do some scripting in PowerShell, and he's looking to reduce costs while providing IT service management. In this case, he is an administrator of ServiceNow, and he has a couple choices here uh, where he can choose to build a bot using Microsoft Flow or he can go ahead and use Azure Logic Apps. And I think in terms of deciding which tool he uses, I think a few things come into play. Certainly not all technical users are created equally. Some are gonna be more comfortable in um, a more of a citizen tool set. Others are gonna be more empowered by using a pro uh, development set. And in this case, we're going to start off and build something in Microsoft Flow, but using the grow up story within Microsoft Flow and Azure Logic Apps, should this bot or this set of workflows become too complex or require features that lend itself to pro integration, perhaps it's custom APIs that need to be built um, or more complex error handling, we have the ability to export our Microsoft Flow and actually import it as a template in Azure and turn that into an Azure Logic App where perhaps a pro integration team would take over the maintenance of that specific bot and workflow. So let's, let's dive into this a little bit deeper now. So for the purpose of this episode, I'm not gonna get into the pro integrator persona in part due to the fact I've already covered it. So if you go back to Middleware Friday, episode 28, We'll keep the links in the comments as well, so you don't have to type that all out. You can go ahead and see two different scenarios that I presented at uh, Integrate London, or you can go ahead and just check out that session from London. And I'm going to talk about a more complex bot where I coded using the bot service. I also used Lewis, which I, I love Lewis, in order to do natural text processing, where you can go ahead and provide an utterance or a statement and Lewis will try to determine your intent. And based upon your intent, we're gonna go ahead and call the correct logic app that we need in order to fill, fulfill that specific function. So go ahead and check out those resources. I'm not gonna talk about them in the context of this presentation, even though they are great. So let's talk a little bit more about the citizen integrator. Now, in this case, we do have a bot and the bot is going to expose the ability for an end user or an employee to update their demographic information inside of Workday. So now let's cut away and let's go ahead and run the demo. So right now I'm in Workday and I'm looking at Jacqueline Desjardins profile and we can see that her home contact information is the following. I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh that just to make sure it's up to date. And 
and it is so now let's go into teams and we're going to go ahead into teams as if we are her and update this information through the bot so here i am in teams i've got a conversation going with busy i can issue the utterance of update address and then Busy's going to respond with different prompts or questions that it has in order to fulfill this task. So now we need to provide the new address. Followed by the city, state, and country code. Next, the zip code. And now we see that the address information has been updated successfully. Now I'm back in Workday. We'll refresh the page. And sure enough, her address has been updated. So that gives you a sense of the execution part of the demo, but let's take a quick look at the flow. So here I'm in Microsoft Flow, so flow.microsoft.com. Go ahead and click edit. And what we do is we need to drag a busy connector um, and more specifically a busy trigger onto our canvas and provide a keyword or an utterance. In this case, we're looking for update address and this is going to be available in a personal chat. Next we need to, to, is to do is to start prompting for questions. So in this case, what is the employee ID? And then we also need to keep this reply activity ID which allows Busy to keep track of the conversations as they're going back and forth. Next, we're gonna ask for the address, the state, the zip code, and then we can go ahead and use the Workday connector in order to update address information using an employee ID. So here's the values that I'm getting from my Busy conversation. I did, um, as you recall from the demo, request the city, state, and country all in one shot. And in that case, I can go ahead and use some expressions in order to pull that data out. And that's what I've done here. Lastly, once we're done all of the work, I'm going to send a confirmation message back to Teams indicating that the address information has been successfully updated. So as you can see, you can build a pretty powerful bot very quickly using this technology. If you can use flow you can build a bot uh, so i think this really unlocks a lot of different use cases in the enterprise now i had a question at integrate and actually it was a good question so they saw that particular demo and they felt okay interesting but if i needed to update my address why wouldn't i just go do it in workday myself since workday does offer its own like self-service capability and it's a web app so it's not like it's overly burdensome to get in there and in this case it was really just an example of one particular use case for a HR bot now typically at least in my experience organizations usually have multiple HR related systems so they may have payroll like a third-party payroll system then they may have what's known as HCM, so human capital management. So Workday would be an example of such an HCM system. And then on top of it, they may have a different learning management system, especially if you have organizations that have a lot of field work. If you have field technicians, uh, they may have a different uh, system related to safety. So, you know, this was just an example of, of one particular use case, but... The idea is that you could create an enterprise bot and it's this enterprise bot that will then take care of interfacing with all of these different HR related systems. And as an end user, you don't have to worry about knowing where to go in payroll and knowing where to go inside of HCM or knowing where to go inside of learning management. You just talk to the bot and the bot takes care of the rest. So hopefully that provides a little more uh, context I think it was a good question. Uh, I didn't explain it as clearly, apparently, um, in the session itself, so hopefully that clears it up. Okay, next up, let's talk about the ad hoc integrator. Now, if you recall, this particular person works in IT. They're the supervisor of the service desk. They do have some technical training. They're 
comfortable doing some scripting in PowerShell, and they also administrate ServiceNow, the IT service management tool. Now, in this case, this gentleman wants to expose an access management bot. Now, I'm sure for those of you that have worked in enterprise IT, getting access to systems is always a big pain. There's usually a lot of red tape, long processes, waiting for someone to create an approval, and there's usually just a lot of waste in that, uh, that overall process. Now, what if you had the ability to create a bot uh, using Microsoft Flow and Busy, where you could go ahead and provide all of the details that you wanted around creating, in this case, an Azure Active Directory group. So you would provide some of those parameters like the name of the group, the email alias for the group, and a description, and then have it kick off a workflow. And this workflow can get sent off to a manager and upon their approval, go ahead and create the group in Azure Active Directory. So that will usually check a box when it comes to approvals and being able to demonstrate that not anyone can just go ahead and create an object inside of Azure Active Directory. Now on top of it, we can also layer on IT service management. So the idea of someone making a request that requests being logged in a system, an enterprise system, once the activity is actually complete, closing off on that specific request. Now, certainly if you've been involved in SOX or Canadian SOX, CSOX audits, these are usually the questions that do come up within uh, your audits, whether that be from an internal audit or external audit perspective you need to be able to demonstrate some level of rigor and approval around changes like this. So in this case, we've got a, a fully managed service where someone can request it from the convenience of a bot, a manager will get an approval. In this case, it's a flow approval, which means that they can prove it from their email box, from the approval center inside of flow.microsoft.com or on their mobile device using the flow mobile application which makes it very convenient for that to occur. And the rest of it is all automated. There's no one that's manually creating tickets. There's no one manually creating the Azure AD group. We're gonna go ahead and use the connectors and orchestrate all of those different calls using Microsoft Flow. So let's jump in and show this demo off. And to kick this bot off, I issue a command of create AD group. Next, I'm going to get prompted for the display name of this Azure AD group. So let's just call this Middleware Friday. And a description now needs to be provided. Followed by an email alias that we want to use for the group. So we'll just call this Middleware Friday. Now what's happened here is, I'll get this out of the way, is that we just received a toast or push notification on our Flow mobile app. And I've got the air server here. So I could actually go ahead and respond to this notification right from my phone. So here we've got a new Azure AD group. I can go ahead and click on approve. Then I see more details around, you know, Middleware Friday, and I have the ability to confirm and add comments as well if I wish. So now that has uh, approval has completed and shortly I should get a notification um, indicating that uh, the group has been created. So this is um, in addition to the mobile app getting a notification, you also get an email notification as well and you can choose to respond to either one of those. Now, you'll also notice inside of Teams, uh, the confirmation has been provided, indicating that the group's been created and that also a request has been logged inside of ServiceNow. Now, as the end user requesting this particular AD group, I also get a confirmation that it's been completed. Let's go ahead and close that. Now, let's jump into Azure AD just to make sure that our user is there, our group is there. Sure enough, the group is there. 
and we see that there's one member and the member is myself and you'll see how that was populated here shortly. In addition, we can go over to service now and see that we have a request that is closed related to this specific AD group of Middleware Friday. So let's now take a look at Flow and see how this was built. So here we are, we're back in flow.microsoft.com and we'll click on the Edit Flow button. Now here, this is a little bit more involved, but we're gonna go through similar process with Busy where we're gonna have a conversation and the conversation is going to get started with create AD group. From there, we're going to ask for the display name, the description, and the mail nickname for the AD group that we want. Then we're going to provide a status update to the end user indicating that a workflow or an approval has been kicked off. Next, we have an approval um, that's going to be sent to, in this case, my email address with information about the group and then a condition exists. So if I accept it and I approve it, um, we'll go down this path where we will create a record and the re record is going to be of a type request inside of ServiceNow and we'll provide some additional information about the priority, the description and some of the other information we've collected through the conversation over Teams. Now we're only creating the request, we're not closing it because we want to perform the work. Uh, next, we're able to use the Azure AD connector to create the group based upon the parameters that were provided. And that followed by, we want to get the user ID. So this is like a system ID for the user that had made the request so that we can go ahead and add this user to the group that we had just created. So that's when we saw members that I was part of the, the membership because of, I, I, because of this action here. Lastly, we want to update the record inside of ServiceNow so that we have a clean audit trail um, as we perform this work. And we're going to close it by providing a closed complete status. Once we're done with ServiceNow, we're going to send a confirmation email to the requester indicating that the request is complete and provide the ServiceNow number, the ticket number. And then lastly, we're going to close off the conversation inside of Teams indicating that it's been successfully completed. In the event that I reject the request, we're going to send a rejection email over to the user who had submitted the request and provide some additional details, including the comments that would have come from the mobile app or the approval center, uh, which is part of Flow. So once again, uh, taking a fairly complex process, if you were to write this out in code or use some other tools, and provide a very rich experience around um, approvals plus creating and automating work in your back-end systems in, within IT. Now, in case you're wondering, how do you actually go ahead and get the busy bot inside of your Microsoft team? So what you do is you go into the chat window or area, then you go ahead and put your cursor in the search box. You'll see a discover bots show up. You click on that, you start typing biz or busy. You'll then see Busy exists, you go ahead and hit the plus sign, and from there you have to acknowledge their terms and conditions, indicate whether or not you want it to be a private chat or an actual uh, group chat. Then you'll need to, to log in and actually log in with your Office 365 account um, in order to authenticate the busy bot uh, from within Microsoft Flow. And from that point, it really just is going ahead and using that specific connector. So hopefully you found that interesting and discovered how easy and quick it is to actually build an enterprise bot using Microsoft Flow and the Busy Connector. So moving on, let's go to community content and let's talk about getting an alert when one of your users creates a flow. So here we are, we are on o365dude.com and in this case, what we're talking about, or I guess what Daniel's talking about, is the new capabilities that have lit up in the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. So this was something actually I had blogged about on the Microsoft Flow blog last Friday. And what you will now see is seven different audit events for Microsoft Flow 
that do show up in the Compliance Center. Now what Daniel highlights here is how you can easily create a new alert policy for these different Microsoft Flow audit points. So in this case, she's going to go ahead and create a new alert policy whenever a flow has been created. And when that occurs, he's going to send an email off to himself. And he'll go ahead and click Save. So in this case, it is a, it is a good example of how you can take advantage of the broader capabilities in the Compliance Center. Now, with Microsoft Flow being a citizen and a self-service platform, there's naturally some questions around governance and control. And this is something that we are investing in more and more, is giving administrators more insight, more visibility into how people are using flow within their organization. And this is just one example of how you can actually automate some of that insight by using the Security and Governance Center. Also, Daniel's got a few different asks that he'd also like to see as part of the audit event. Wish list, as he's calling it. So these are all very good ideas. Uh, no promises, but um, definitely some, some interesting suggestions here. So that concludes this edition of Middleware Friday. Uh, we'll catch you again next week. Steph Jan will be presenting. I'm not exactly sure what he's got in store, but I'm sure it'll be good. So once again, thank you for tuning in and thank you BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. See you again soon.